very much for the invitation and the in this conference. So I will be talking about journey, um, a series of papers uh, with my uh, former PhD student in the Younger College. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about the setup. So uh, uh, Gamma is a function group of the first kind. Uh, after when they have a plane or the union disk by even fraction transformations. So this uh, this uh, picture uh, represents the unit disk. Um, S is a uh, Euclidean boundary. Uh, in this case, just a circle. And in case of uh, upper half plane, it will be projective line. Um, and F is a fundamental the domain for gamma. Uh, the first kind means that uh, the uh, quotient has a finite hyperbolic volume. It may or may not have cusps. In this case, it's co-compact in this picture, but it could be with cusp, but the volume is fine. So uh, it is uh, uh, well known that in this case, uh, the fundamental domain can be chosen with even number of sides. So with finite, not just finite, but even number of sides, uh, which are identified by the generators. So I denote the set of generators gamma 1, gamma k. And k, k is uh, even number. So for example, this side may be identified with this side. So this side identified with this side, and this side identified with this side. Uh, now, uh, the set J, uh, I call it the set of jumps, and it will be clear why, is just the set of points on, on the Euclidean boundary. Uh, so uh, we define the map from the Euclidean boundary to the set of generators. It's a subjective locally, uh, locally constant map on the boundary minus jumps. So basically what it says is that it, it is uh, locally finite, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's constant on each segment between the jumps. For example, it could be chosen that on the segment between AI and AI I plus 1, it's just the i's generated. Okay? doesn't have to be like this, but this is one of the, of the possibilities. And as soon as this setup is done, we can define the boundary map on the circle uh, by the formula f of x is equal to rho of x, which is this corresponding generator applied to x. It's a piecewise fractional linear transformation uh, whose set of discontinuities is j. Okay? So you see, this is. Uh, F, f of x is a map of the circle with, with discontinuities, but it's also an endomorphism. So then, a, a, a way to study endomorphism is to look at the natural extension, because natural extension is going to be automorphism. So what's the natural extension map? Is, is defined as follows. It's a map from S cross S minus diagonal. So it's basically, if small f is one dimensional, this is going to be a two dimensional map from the square minus diagonal to itself. And it's defined by the second coordinate. This, this is the formula. So if you have a pair of points, u, w, so you, you look where w is, you apply the corresponding uh, uh, generator of the group to W, and then you apply the same to U. Okay, so now if we identify uh, the pair of points on S cross S minus diagonal, so in this case, well, minus diagonal simply means that U is not equal to W. So you have two points on the boundary. So you can identify these two points with an oriented geodesic from U to W. 
uh, you remember that if, if you have a say uh, the, the model in, in the unit disk that geodesics are circles and diameters are orthogonal to the Euclidean boundary. Okay, so if you have two points that there is a unique geodesic which goes from U to W. And then we can think of uh, uh, of this map F as a map on geodesics. Okay? So that exactly the fact that we apply the same fractional linear transformation to both ends means that we apply it to geodesics. And so if, if you think of, of this natural extension map geometrically, then you also can, can call it a reduction map. So basically you start with the geodesic and you apply this map, and, and so you, you reduce this geodesic, and this geodesic is equivalent to uh, the given one, uh, because you, you, you apply transformations, products of transformations, which will generate the group. Uh, and so we'll see what happened. Uh, uh, several years ago, don't I get conjecture that such a map possesses a global attractor with finite rectangular structure? So I will explain in, in the details what, uh, what it means, but right now I want to show you the picture. And you see that, uh, so this is, this is S1, this is a torus. As, as, as process, right? It's a square. And this picture looks like a computer generated picture. And indeed it is. So there are many, many points, uh, random points. Uh, and then this transformation F is applied to these points. So, and then we throw away the first, say, 10,000 images and see what happens. And, and it's, it's absolutely clear that, that all images will, will belong to, to some subset of the square. And that, that if, if you start here, then, then eventually your point gets to this set. So, uh, so here are a couple of uh, uh, examples. In fact, for the modular group, uh, and then later on, we, we ran examples for groups and groups like this, and it always looks looks like this. So let me formulate the, the conjecture exactly. So this is a, a Zagier reduction theory conjecture. The, the word reduction theory comes from number theory, and like there is a there is a reduction theory for quadratic forms, and so this is a very analogous. And I'm not going to. To, to, to get into the vocabulary between these two, but it's, 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 there is a total analogy between uh, reduction of geodesics and reduction of um, quadratic forms. Uh, so here what he conjectures that for every Fuchsian group uh, uh, gamma, there exists a fundamental number, and the set of generators as above and an open set of jumps, okay? You're not looking at just one set of jumps. You're looking, you, 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 you uh, perturb, perturb this set. So he wants to, to have a, uh, an open set of jumps, such that the map F possesses a, a global attra attractor set. Uh, so it, basically it says that if you, if you take S cross S minus diagonal and you apply F, the powers of F, and then you take the intersection, so you get something, uh, you get an attractor. The point is that the attractor is much smaller than the full, the full square. And it consists of two or one, in the general cases, connected components each having final rectangular, uh, rectangular structure and in the previous picture. So it's bounded by not decreasing step functions with final number of steps on each half. Uh, uh, and on this set, F is essentially by effect. And this is the first part. And the second part, uh, that every point uh, uh, 
uh, of diagonal is mapped to this attractor after finitely many iterations. And this is again uh, for dynamics. If you have an attractor, then it is okay to, to have infinite points as an attractor. But for number theory, uh, uh, he wanted to, to have it after finitely many uh, iterations. So, so this this uh, conjecture was completely solved for SL to Z, and also for surface groups. So the surface group is, is a Fuchsian group, which is co-compact, and uh, which only has hyperbolic elements. So it doesn't have cusps, it doesn't have the parabolic elements, it doesn't have elliptic elements. Uh, but it's also confirmed by computer uh, simulation for all groups and groups, well, not for all groups and groups, for, for examples with cusps and with elliptic elements. So, uh, there are two papers. Uh, one paper is uh, 2010, is for SL2C, and the paper about groups and groups is, is in preparation. It's almost ready, but it's, uh, the results are proved, but uh, the paper is not, it's not submitted. So I wanted to talk about the second one if, if I have time, then I will tell you quickly what it exactly is known about uh, SL2C to, to case. So the surface case. Uh, okay, so the, uh, so the, the, the quotient is uh, the surface uh, of, of genus G. Um, there is a uh, the uh, first of all, I want to construct a special fundamental region. So there exists a fundamental region which can, uh, consists of eight G minus four sides. And the reason I'm choosing this one, but not four G sides as the usual in topology, is because in this case uh, of uh, eight G minus four sides in fundamental region, all sides are perpendicular. And this is very convenient for the construction. Uh, in particular, they satisfy so-called extension condition. Uh, the, the geodesics extensions of the segments never intersect the interiors of the tiling. Okay? So the tiling is always, so this, this is the, the first fundamental region. And then, then you uh, look at images uh, by the group and they will tile, but these pieces never intersect the, the continuations of the site. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, the identification of the sites is, is given by this function, sigma of i, given by this formula. So for example, for g equals 2, you have 12 gone, and the identification is the following. One is identified with seven, four with 10, and then two with 12, three with five, six with eight, and nine with 11. If G is higher, then the formula is exactly the same, but, but the picture will be more, more complicated. So, uh, so this, the sides, uh, the side i lies on the isometric circle for the transformation down on i. Uh, the isometric circle is simply, simply two, it's a circle uh, on which the Euclidean length is not changed. If you, if you know the, the, the theory of groups and groups. Uh, I can draw this picture. So if you have a hyperbolic element, it has an axis, okay? And there are exactly one circle which is mapped by this transformation, by the circle of the same, of the same uh, Euclidean values. So this circle is called isometric circle. Uh, now, uh, uh, Bowen and series 
consider this problem and they consider uh, well first of all I should say that after we define this particular fundamental region and, and the transformation which identifies the size so you there are there are certain identities that this transformation satisfy um, so I'm not going to go into details uh, what I'm saying is that uh, let's consider the set of jumps uh, which are the points P. Let me go back to this, to this picture. Okay, so each, each side, uh, the first side has, uh, if you continue the side, uh, the geodesic, will be from P1 to Q2. The second one will be from P2 to Q3, it says. Okay? So if you look at all points P1, P2, P3, this is a partition I was, I was talking about. Okay? So the number of points in the partition is exactly equal to the number of generators. So uh, So Bowen and Sirius look at this particular partition, P partition, and they define the map FP equal gamma i of x when x belongs to, to, to gamma i in, in parentheses. And gamma i, as I said, goes from P i to uh, P i plus 1. And they show that this is a mark of, uh, uh, map is marked with respect to the refined partition. So, so you, you're not just looking at the partition of P's, you also put in the Q's, the, the end points of this. And, and the expanded satisfied unique uh, distortion estimate that with the unique finite invariant uh, ergodic measure equivalent to the exact measure. So they, they, for, for the partition P, that was good, that much. <coughs> now, let's look at the natural extension. Let's just look at this P partition and natural extension. So, uh, Adler and Plateau, by the way, they suggested to look at this uh, 4G minus 4 uh, sided fundamental region rather than the regular one. Uh, so, they found an invariant domain for this uh, natural extension map. And obviously, this invariant domain has a finite rectangular structure, and this level levels they are connected with P's. So you see, this these levels are P's, and actually, this these levels are Q's. Okay, so they didn't prove the reduction theory. They just proved that this map possesses a very nice invariant domain. Okay. And in which domain it's, a, it's, a, it's an essential digression. So, and also uh, 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 this uh, natural extension is a K automorphism, which is equivalent to the fact that the small f and, and exact endomorphism, and both uh, Sirius and Adam and Plateau explain how the boundary map can be used for coding symbolic and geodesic flow on the quotient. So that's the total the, the, the result. So now I want to, to give you a definition uh, of a so-called cycle property because it's the most most important uh, tool. So now let's look at the set of jumps. And we will vary. We're not only looking at P's. And we're looking at AI, which is between PI and Q. The full interval. And again, we, we define uh, the uh, boundary map by the same formula, mm -hmm. except gamma i of x will be between AI and AI plus 1 rather than PI and PI plus 1. Uh, so this is the boundary map, and then we will look at the corresponding uh, reduction map. So this map has discontinuities. 
at the point of AI. But nevertheless, we want to look at the expansion of these points. So basically, instead of you have a discontinuity, you have a map which is discontinuous. Okay? So instead of, instead of giving up, you, you try to uh, look a little bit to the left of, the, of this break point and a little bit to the right and apply two possible maps. So for AI, you, you apply gamma I if you are to the left and you, uh, to the right, and you apply gamma I minus one if you are from the left, okay? And you start looking what's going on. And it turns out that for some non-negative numbers, mi and ki, you always get the cycle. So, ai, so you apply gamma i here, and you apply gamma i minus 1 here. Now you have these two points, and these two points, generically, they will not hit the discontinuity, so your map is uniquely determined. So you go, and you go here, you go, etc. And it's not at all clear, but the fact remains that in finitely many steps, you get a cycle. So this it was the first discovery. And in fact, that we proved that in the above construction, if you, if you have any point A between PI and QI, you always, for any partition point AI satisfied with this, you have a cycle point. And now, I will state, state the theorem, which is actually a solution of the deduction theory uh, 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 conjecture of that here for surface case. So there exists an open subset of partitions. First of all, remember the conjecture. So we want to have an open set of partitions. In this case, this open set will constitute those which satisfy so-called short cycle property. So what short cycle property is, basically it says it is that the cycle it looks like this. The shortest possible cycle. It has two steps here and two steps here. So, this is technical. Uh, and a subset DA, which is going to be a tractor, which has the following property. So first of all, the map FA is essentially bijective on DA. Um, it has finitely rectangular rectangular structure combinatorially equivalent to that of uh, DP, where P is bone series uh, partition with P, only P's. And the set, uh, the, it is definitely an attractor. So, should be the A bar? Hmm? Should be the A this bar? Uh, yes, yes, sorry. And almost every point, this is a, a little bit of modification of the original uh, property, what that you wanted, you wanted every point, it's not always every point, it's full measure, good open set of points, but it, there could be some exceptions. And almost every point is mapped to this attractor after finitely many iterations. And everybody else? Hmm? Eventually. Yes. And every eventually. yeah, because it's an attractor. It's an attractor. So everybody else approaches it's eventually. Yeah, this but most points jump. On. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay. So this is a, this is what we were uh, able to prove. And uh, and the picture looks looks like this and you see if you have uh, you see this is what I mean by combinatorially equivalent to the Bowen series remember that the Bowen series this this levels were exactly P's and these levels were exactly Q's here they are not exactly A's 
okay? But nevertheless, uh, it looks very similar to the other one. So the main steps in the proofs are, uh, we prove first that the bone series F satisfies these properties. It's not that hard to prove because you can actually compute everything. Uh, and then the, the attractor, so and it, it, it has a, there exists an attractor for F P bar. And D A bar is constructed from the P bar by so called quilting uh, technique. And again, it's, it, this technical, but basically, it, you have to start with a tractor DP bar, and you apply, you, you add and delete stuff. And you add and delete something, so if you have final rectangular structure, then, then you still can find rectangular structure for A. And then you prove by activity and traffic property folks. So, um, so the observations are the first of all that these properties should be true for any case here, but the combinatorial structure is getting more and more complicated as AI approaches to QI. Okay, and the second observation was even more interesting. In, interesting, uh, and it seems that these properties actually. If, if, you, if you move partition A from this integral, you still get an attractor of finding rectangular structure. However, it, it's going to be a little bit more irregularly looking. So there are some new levels uh, which were not so predicted before, etc. Um, so, so what? Uh, this is all I wanted to say about the Fuchs and Group case. So, uh, so for Moller Group, we, we did the maximum possible result. So you see that for Fuchs and Group, the result is we solved the conjectures. We, we found an open set, but we, we conjectured that this open set is not maximum. There are more. For SL2Z, we did the maximum. Okay, so this is the standard fundamental domain. Now, now I'm on the upper half plane, and this is the standard fundamental domain. And the, the generators are T S and T inverse. T T of x is x plus one. S of x is minus one over x, and T minus one is x minus one. Okay, so this is the standard fundamental domain. So now. Uh, what is the, the boundary? The prison boundary is a real line and infinity. And the set of jumps now so will be actually A, B, two, two numbers, <coughs> and infinity, which is minus infinity and plus infinity. So what I want to do, I want to define, so there are three uh, generators, and there are the three uh, intervals of the real line, okay? And I want, I want it to make sense. So I want to, I want A be less than or equal to zero, B greater than or equal to zero. The, the dif difference is greater than or equal to one, and minus A, B is less than or equal to one. So, the, this parameter set is, is this. So our theorem for the modular group is if A and B belong to this uh, parameter set, then essentially uh, the uh, reduction theory conjecture uh, holds. So this set is maximum possible. You cannot, you cannot have more. That's the so the boundary map is given, as I said. So if you are below A, you apply T. If you are above B, you apply T inverse. If you are between A and B, you apply minus 1 over X. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so this is the 
boundary map. And uh, now it was AB continued fractions were mentioned in the title. So this is, uh, if you have A and B in this parameter set P, you can define so-called AB continued fractions using a generalized integral part function and this uh, integral part function, generalized uh, integral part, it looks like this. It looks like integral part, except it is to zero between A and B. And then this is one from B to B plus one is one, and then it's two, etc. Uh, so this is the formula for integral part function. And the thing is that if you have a and B in P, <coughs> then any rational number can be expressed uniquely in this uh, minus continuous fraction form. So it's the same as regularly uh, you have plus and P. Uh, but but here, here is minus, and the reason minus is because minus 1 over X belongs to the modular group, and 1 over X doesn't belong. So, so you, you, you define uh, this N0 and N1 inductively uh, using this generalized uh, uh, group part. And then if you cut the sequence, you get the number RK. And these numbers are K, they're rational numbers, they can go to X. So basically the same uh, theorem as for regular continuous instructions uh, is called, except you don't have um, you don't have best approximation. Okay, so now let me uh, go to uh, to the classical cases. So the classical case, the first classical case, it corresponds to A minus 1 and B equals to 0. And it's so-called minus continuous fractions or Gauss continuous fractions. And this is the picture of the attractive attractor. It, it, uh, it has one component. So this is minus one one continuous fractions, and this corresponds to the regular continuous fractions with every second digit uh, uh, change somewhere. So it, you can think of that basically as regular continuous fractions, but it can be uh, written in the minus continuous fraction form. And this is minus one half and one half, and this exactly. Uh, so-called nearest integer continuous fraction. So in each step, instead of <coughs> taking uh, floor or ceiling, you take the, the nearest integer. And this is due to Hurwitz, and this is, uh, it also has a tractor of this form. And for this, interestingly, so one, the first part holds, and the second part about the finitely many steps, there are exceptions. So already for this case, the, the here uh, conjecture doesn't, doesn't fall exactly as, as stated, but with, with some uh, exceptions. Uh, so, so this is a generic example. Uh, just, uh, in fact, this is an example that I looked at. Uh, just two random numbers, and, and you see that there is a five rectangular structures, and well, the, 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 we did a lot of experimentations, and it turned out that it doesn't matter whether A and B are rational or irrational or transcendental or whatever, as soon as they belong to this domain, you always have rectangular structure, like this. Uh, so this is a, let me just state the main theorem, and I think I'll, I'll be finished. So the main theorem is the following. So there is exists a one-dimensional Lebesgue measure zero uncountable set of this diagonal. So, so the uh, if you remember the set, this is a template, and this is this diagonal. And then there is a bad set here for which uh, this 
condemned to die. But then for everything else here, it holds. The map has an attractive satisfying property one. And for an open and dense set on P minus this diagonal, that this bad, bad set, the property two, and hence the uh, reduction theory conjecture hold. And for the rest, the property holds for almost every point uh, of R2 minus diagonal. So, uh, so what, what's this, this bad set here? This bad set uh, corresponds to uh, these attractors with infinitely many signs. So this, this is really complicated, but we actually describe this, this absolute set completely. Okay? And then the structure of this attractor can be explicitly computed from the parameters A and B. So basically A has a cycle property and B has a cycle property. And we have finitely many numbers in these cycles, and these numbers define this level sets. Okay. I think I should stop here. Okay, well, he, uh, this finite rectangular structure uh, gives him possibility to compute certain integrals easily. Because you can, if you integrate over a rectangular set, you can write down explicitly everything. So this is basically what his interest started with. But you can argue that for each Fuchsian group, you only need one example. You don't really need this A and B family. But he started experimenting, and he he discovered but one is Bob Bowen series. No, I mean sure, sure. One is Bowen series, exactly. I mean, of course, if you have a mixed group, if you have elliptic points, it's going to be more complicated. You have to combine Bowen series plus SL to Z thing. But basically, he just likes to experiment. And, and this is a very, this, is, this, this was very challenging conjecture, that you always get this fine rectangular structure. So Maybe I will add a comment, because somebody has been asking me something related to Bowen. So we have to distinguish Lewis Bowen, current, and Rufus no, no, this is Rufus Bowen. Bowen. And uh, Sirius, Caroline Sirius. Caroline Sirius. Sirius is, I think Sirius, Sirius is unique. Sirius. But there, exactly, there are two Bowens in dynamics. Sure. So this is Rufus Bowen, and so Rufus Bowen and Sirius, and then Sirius herself continued to work on that after Bowen died. So there is application that I didn't have time to talk. This is, a, there is an application to uh, coding of the geodesic flow. And so the cross section exactly corresponds to this attractor. Almost for this height. <laughs> so, so for, for S and to Z, you, you don't look to the full attractor, but you look only at this part. So the S applied to the strip between A and B. That's, that's technical. And this is to differentiate between continued fractions when, when you combine all t's and all t inverses together, rather than look at and each t one by one. So uh, now, you, 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 you give a definition of geodesic, which is reduced if u and w belongs to this red set and you define the reduction map by, by, by this formula. Uh, so, and then you define the cross section. Not to appear. Hmm? Not to appear. I think it's to appear. To appear. Yeah, it says to appear. Oh, no, no, no. This is the coding theory. It, uh, I copied it. No, it appeared in, in 2012. Uh, 
So the, the cross section is parametrized by by this uh, by this set. This is the red set, and this is the cross section. And so the, the coding, if you have a reduced geodesic, and it's important to, to be reduced, uh, then using the bijectivity of this reduction map, you can extend the sequence to, to the to the path, uh, to the to the to the past. Okay, and so starting with n zero, it's just a b continuous fraction expansion of w, and this negative uh, sequence, it's a little it's complicated. Sometimes it only depends on u, and sometimes it depends on u and w. If it only depends on u, then it, it's a situation when this code, this a, b, has a dual code. Not getting into details. But in any case, you can, uh, the closure of the set of all admissible coding sequences, and now you have two sided sequences, uh, and if sigma is the left shift map of the sequence, then the code map is a continuous subjective one to one, a final to one map, such that the following diagram is coming. Okay? So, and then the basic flow on, this, on the surface becomes a special flow over the symbolic dynamical system. So, the cross section depends, so there are many, many, many cross sections of the genetic. And some of these cross sections correspond to the to the classical cases. Some some have dual codes, and then then you have sorting shift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.